Have you ever had that moment where you're given a name for something and suddenly you can more deeply visualize and understand that thing? I had one of those moments about a year and a half ago at a community organizing workshop sponsored by the American Community Gardening Association. With a team of fellow participants, I was asked to put together a one-hour presentation about asset-based community development. I had never heard the term before. But as I looked over the materials we'd been given to present, that's when I had the moment. I had a name for something I had been participating in for years. In the 1990s, John Kretzmann and John McKnight founded the Asset-Based Community Development Institute at Northwestern. Now it's a global movement for sustainable social and economic change, and it asks a simple question. What can we do with what we already have to get what we need? It turns citizens into co-producers and encourages institutions to lead by stepping back to create space for citizen action. Once I discovered asset-based community development, I could see its presence in many areas of my life. But most significantly, I experienced it in the growth of the Dr. John Wilson Community Garden near my home in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Dr. Wilson started the garden in 2004 on town property. He was in his late 80s. I met him in August of 2005, and it didn't take him long to enroll me in his vision to grow your own food, educate others, and share what you have. Every day, Dr. Wilson looked around our community and asked himself, what can we do with what we already have to get what we need? He was a master at finding free resources, repurposing materials, and enlisting community support in his vision. He gathered scrap wood from local sawmills and turned it into tomato steaks. He salvaged 1,000 one-foot pipes and turned them into a system for building winter hoop tunnels so we could grow food year-round. And he garnered a stipend from a local housing development to pay me for the summer of 2006 to help him. The town collected $20 from each of the 12 families that were growing food for themselves on the land and left Dr. Wilson and whatever volunteers he could scrounge up to grow food on the rest of the land and donate it into the community. In 2006, the Health Initiative, a volunteer committee in our town devoted to health and wellness, saw the value of Dr. Wilson's work and began to consider how his vision might continue beyond his physical abilities. Mind you, Dr. Wilson's physical abilities at the time surpassed most. The first time his wife Nancy met me, she said to me, well, I see you're trying to keep up. And I think she meant it. <laughs> Dr. Wilson was the only person to call her home before 7 a.m. And he'd already been up since 5. Good morning, I would say. And he consistently responded, it is a good morning. And then he'd launch in to one of his latest gardening ideas. Spurred by the health initiative, 10 citizens from our town, including Dr. Wilson and myself, formed a board to guide the growth of the community garden and the development of school gardens at the primary and the elementary school. Within two years, the garden had grown from 12 to nearly 40 members. Gardening education was happening in nearly every classroom, and volunteers were harvesting and donating 2,000 pounds annually into our community. Years ago, on a tour of another garden, the tour leader remarked, you people in Black Mountain have been so lucky. From the outside, I could see how all those accomplishments in a short period of time could appear to be luck. We were one of eight programs in the state chosen to receive grant funding for our projects. But grants in and of themselves are only oxygen to the fire. They'll never be the fuel to make it last. In our community, we relied upon the gifts of individuals, the power of local associations, the physical and economic resources of our town, the resources of public, private, and nonprofit institutions, and the stories of our evolving community. Our approach has always been relationship-driven. The key is trust 
and an open hand, which allows for a continuous flow of energy and ideas between all parties. We trust that we will always be able to adapt to meet our needs and that the resources that we have will always be enough. Dr. Wilson taught me to look for the gifts in everyone that walked into the garden. And because of that, it's people who care for and develop the character of the garden. Some come once, some come every week. Five years ago, an out-of-work architect blew through town and on his way, repaired the barn roof. Last summer, a local built custom benches for a 300-foot-long native plant trail, and his wife grew starts for a cut flower bed. Recently, a scientific illustrator developed maps for the entire garden. And for years, some of our volunteers have been coming every week to harvest pounds and pounds of produce and get it to our distribution sites. Years ago, a Buddhist Sangha in Black Mountain rented an entire 400 square foot plot and donated all the food they grew through our distribution programs. For years, the welcome table would take our fresh produce and prepare a meal and serve it on a weekly basis. And now, Bounty and Soul, a volunteer-run program, takes our produce and that from Mana Food Bank and distributes it on a weekly basis. The Montessori school my children once attended when they were young comes and plants sweet potato slips every June and then comes and harvests the mature potatoes and sometimes a few voles every October. And that's asset-based community development at its best. The garden gets volunteer labor. The children get first-hand experience growing food. And folks in town get the nutrition that they need. Last summer, we held our first ever Empty Bowls event to raise funds for a future outdoor event facility and kitchen. Local potters threw 100 bowls, which we filled with soup from three local restaurants. Gardeners donated bread. Board of Alderman Mike Sobel loaned us his tent, which kept 100 people dry just as a thunderstorm rolled in. Harwood Funeral Homes and the Chamber of Commerce loaned us tables and chairs. And local entrepreneur Joe Halleck set up a solar-powered sound system so that our live music and presentations could be heard over the nearby interstate traffic and the thunderstorm. The physical resources of our town serve as assets, too. I have yet to find a garden better situated. On the east flows the Swannanoa River, from which we pump water. On the south lies a horse farm, from which we get an endless supply of fertilizer. And on the west lies a 10,000 square foot indoor soccer facility at the top of a hill. You may be wondering what soccer and gardening have to do with each other. Absolutely nothing. It's the roof and the hill that come into play. The roof collects rainwater into six 1,100 gallon barrels, and the hill, gravity feeds it to a faucet in the garden. In 2011, the town established a greenway trail around the garden, connecting it to downtown. Gardeners are apprehensive about the increased traffic the trail would bring, and that it might in some way take away from the spirit of the garden. From my perspective, it was a statement of the town's commitment to maintaining a long-term relationship with its citizens. You don't pave a mile of trail and name it the Garden Greenway unless you're serious about keeping the garden in the greenway. Yet the town has never done for the community what it could do for itself. Black Mountain Parks and Recreation has focused on providing service and allowed the community to provide care. I've seen again and again how this reciprocal relationship builds trust in one another and pride in our accomplishments. The day I knew the community garden would always be a part of the town of Black Mountain happened well before the town paved a trail around the garden. And it went like this. I'm walking to the grocery store when I pass another mom in the parking lot we were in a kinder music class together years before with our sons. She asks me how I'm doing, and then she asks about the garden. I give her an update, and she tells me how proud she is to have it in her town. She tells me how she brags to her family whenever they come to visit. And that's when I saw it. She had never stepped foot in the garden. 
yet she had taken ownership of the garden as part of her town. That small moment felt like one of our biggest successes because I could see how our story had grown bigger than the land which had sprouted it. You see, ownership is one of the great outcomes of asset-based community development. As the garden nears its 10th anniversary, nearly 70 families grow food for themselves, and volunteers contribute nearly 2,000 hours annually, inoculating mushroom logs, caretaking 100 fruit and nut trees, growing, harvesting, and distributing 3,000 pounds of food annually. Recently at a conference, I told a fellow Parks and Recreation employee all of this, and she looked at me in surprise. Community gardens don't have a reputation for lasting beyond a few years, let alone 10. I'd say our success in building a decade-old community garden comes from the fact that in our small town of just 8,000 people, we never looked at the town's budget to determine our community's assets. I'd say our success also comes from never relying on one individual or one partnership. We never overlook the potential for anyone to be able to contribute. Like the time two young farm boys from Alabama took it upon themselves to harvest 40 pounds of huge Cherokee tomatoes. I looked into their overflowing wheelbarrow and every single one of them was green. I asked them why, and they said simply, well, they were so big. I seized the opportunity, and I found every recipe I could for how to prepare green tomatoes and sent them to our distribution sites. Sometimes people tell me that they can't make a difference because they aren't a Dr. Wilson, but you don't have to be. A great community is built in the multiplication of its assets, not the limitations of its mistakes. Dr. Wilson woke up every day passionate about his work and eager to share it. But it took our community to build the garden. If you could do one thing to make a difference in your community, what would it be? Discover your passion. Decide how you're going to share it. And then look within your community for the assets to build something extraordinary. Thank you.